Hi everyone and welcome to this month's author's interview series. I'm here with the wonderful author Robert Lou Trujillo and he's here he's going to be talking about his new book that he's worked on well not new but his book he worked on and it's called Furcon's First Flat Top. Thank you for being with us today. I'm glad Thank you're you able to me. stop by. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to get right into the interview if that's okay with you. Yeah. Cool. So one question I wanted to ask you uh, when did you begin becoming so creative and writing books? Uh, well, I'm a visual artist first, so I started working, uh, doing drawing, illustrations as a kid. Uh, moved on to doing graffiti art as a teenager, or being obsessed with it rather. <laughs> and then uh, moving on to fine art, illustration, murals. And then uh, when, when I became a dad, my son who's now 14, um, inspired me to get into children's books and oh. to not first it was just the illustration part but then slowly I began to understand that I could write as well so, oh cool yeah okay do you remember the moment that you were first inspired to be well you said you kind of shared it with us about your son but it was there something else that came with it like when you seen something or just was like I'm inspired to write something about this topic or this something specific well, I mean, when he was when he was a baby, um, you know, we would get books from people as gifts, mm -hmm. and then uh, I would go look for books, and it was often like it was really difficult to find a book that was about a kid, kid like him specifically. At the time, what I found were uh, lots of historical books, so like you know Martin Luther King or right. uh, you know Cesar Chavez, or <laughs> something something from someone that had already happened in the past, which is not a bad thing. But I wanted to you know find just an everyday slice of life thing, right. so that was really hard to find. <laughs> Um, so, you know, when that happened, I think I just was like, you know what, I'm going to do this or right. I'm, I'm going to get in, involved and find out what it takes to do it. Right. Yeah. I get it. Hi. And Hi. so what was the hardest part about writing books for you? The hardest part about writing? Um, well, I'm a, a visual artist first, so I think getting over the, the what's the word, um, the hurdle of like being able to call yourself an author or a writer because it's, I mean... Children's books are short and they're um, they're easy to read, but they're really hard to write. So it just takes a lot of practice and really a lot of reading. So right. you know, reading. I mean, if if you're an auntie or if you're a parent or you're a grandparent and you read books with kids, like you know the ones that are pretty easy to get through with them, and the ones that you're like, oh my god, I can't wait right. till this book is over. Um, so you know, there's a there's a rhythm to it, and I think um, the hardest part about it is just. Um, getting over your own fear because once you start reading a lot and then just practicing then it becomes more, uh, natural. more natural and it's like a, a habit almost no I totally understand I have a three-year-old and I'm like some books work yeah and some don't yeah right exactly <laughs> um, so it is a trial and error type thing sometimes um, and so what was the best part of writing books um, what's the best part I don't know I think one of the best things is when kids come up to you and give you, like, say that I read your book or that I liked your book. Because, right. you know, adults or, or teachers or librarians, uh, they will tell you all the time. But it's rare, you know, that a kid will come up to you unprompted, you know, right. like, like not somebody standing behind him like, go tell them how much you like it. <laughs> you know, like just a kid coming up to you. And I've had that happen a few times where, you know, that was really awesome because I hope that they liked it enough to come up and say something. So, yeah. Right. And so at Tandem, we absolutely enjoy your book, Fur Con's First Flat Top. And so I just wanted to ask, what inspired you to write this book specifically? Um, so that one was a combination of things. So my son, for one, um, it's like a, a father and son story. So I definitely wanted to do that. There are not enough books where it's like a, a man of color and a son of color just doing something everyday thing. Uh, so my son, for sure. Then... Um, Partly my story. When I was a kid, I, I got a flat top when I was in elementary school. I lived in, uh, in Richmond at the time, in El Cerrito, and so I remember going to get my hair cut. Um, and then I just started to see other kids uh, bringing the flat top back, and so kind of seeing life around me inspired me to make right. that, yeah. I understand. It's also in, I know you heard you mention that you didn't have many um, books about 
men of color and so this was that was very inspirational for you yeah. also the theme behind it like the barbershop vibe yeah yeah it is a cultural thing for yeah. the men of color like women in their hair salon the salon like yes. the men goes with their sons it's ubiquitous they, yeah right? everybody goes yeah <laughs> and it's, it's a time to just bond and share stories and laugh and joke so it's a lot deeper meaning yes. what I took from it yes. when I was reading it like this really resonates in like the people of color because this is yeah. what we do yeah yeah go to the barbershop yeah <laughs> It's a it's a ritual. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, has being a parent changed your creative side in any way? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I have a, a teenager, and then I have a, a a little baby who's sitting right here talking. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think uh, in in general, they force you to slow down. You have less time to be creative sometimes. I think everyone who is a creative in any way would love to have you know hours of time to just kind of. Uh, dream and think about right. what they want to do and like play around throw paint metaphorically but uh, when you have a kid you really have to like dial it down and be like okay from 2 30 to 4 <laughs> you know that's when I have to work and like the creative stuff better come then right. um, so yeah it is, has definitely changed but um, I think having kids being a parent especially when it comes to kid lit or, or picture books it definitely inspires a lot more stories because you get to see life again through through their right. eyes and the, has there ever been a time where you were blocked or could not create? And if so, how did you kind of get past that? What were some of your techniques that you used to kind of like get those creative juices back flowing? Um, I think sleep is a good one. So if you're really <laughs> exhausted, like it's, it's really easy to get blocked. Um, I also keep like a folder of inspiring things, mm -hmm. like whether it be songs or films or other books or, or artwork that inspires me. So I think um, as I go through life, uh, if I see something I really like or hear it, I, I'm like, oh, let me put that right. here. Um, of course, I'll listen to it again randomly, but when I'm really stuck, then I'm like, go back and say, what was it that you know inspired me recently? And that really helps. Uh, and I actually make like a, a little uh, board with images from different types of media about inspiring things because yeah, it happens a lot. You know? No, I totally understand. And so, what do you think is the value of storytelling in young, with young children? Um, well, I think books in particular, whether they be picture books or middle grade books, are super important because uh, with children, and I, I mean all people, when you're reading a story, if, <laughs> if you're just hearing the words, you, your imagination starts to work without you even trying. And I think that um, you can put yourself into a lot of different situations, whether it be you know, in another country with dragons or um, going to school or just something as simple as going to the laundromat. Um, the imagination is really cool. So that's important muscle right. to work out with young kids, uh, you know, matter, no matter what age. Um, and then I think um, just learning to read, like, uh, and not just read because you have homework, but to read for fun, like right. to find a book that makes you want to sit there and like just pour over it or devour it or just you know, share with other people, you know, like, hey, have you read this? You right. know, so uh, often you hear kids say, you know, I got that toy or I got that game, but it's really cool when they have like a, a, a really good book that they love to share. Right. It is good, well, especially like when I, because we read in our classrooms and things here. Yeah. And going into the classroom and they're like, I remember you. You read yeah. this book here last time. Yeah, it is a fulfilling moment yeah. to be like, I'm glad you enjoyed that book and you like remembered. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So I get it. I yeah. totally get it. And so, what advice would you give children who want to grow up and become an author? Um, I would say read lots of books. <laughs> uh, find uh, magazines you like, uh, chapter books you like, graphic novels, comics, picture books, uh, anything that's, that's fun to read. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of reading to be an author, <laughs> right. excuse me, and uh, the more you read, the, the easier it will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think... Um, Practicing, just uh, trying it out, you know, doing your own little versions. I keep a notebook or a sketchbook. That's really fun to have, a notebook or a sketchbook. Right. Um, and it takes you away from looking at a screen or looking at some type of device where you can just have you and your, and your, your thoughts, thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so I know in this book you've done the illustrations, which is really cool. And so I wanted to ask you, what was the, what inspired you with the illustrations or how do you get your inspiration in certain illustrations, such as when you're deciding what characters will look like or where mm -hmm. how do you come up with those things well uh, for picture books actually uh, photography uh, inspires a lot so I look at um, 
someone like, uh, I don't know, Ansel Adams, who's like an old school photographer, or um, Gordon Parks, or um, uh, recently um, this photographer I've become obsessed with, his name is, um, it's escaping me right now, but photography a lot, it helps a lot to kind of like, think about light and shadow and like where the person is placing their 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 focus so is it on that person or their hand or their their chair um, photography is very very inspiring um, and then occasionally with uh, painting I'll look at you know muralists or other illustrators and think of something that they did a technique and be like oh I want to implement that in my next piece yeah and so when you're coming up with your ideas in regards to like storytelling and illustration what what's the how does that process start do you kind of think of a character and then just build off that or do you have like an idea of a topic how does that process work well for 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 con uh what i was doing at the time was making uh, a series of short stories so i would uh write a paragraph and then make an image and then sometimes i would make an image first and then write something afterwards and i did a whole bunch of different ones like that with different topics and ideas just to kind of uh, practice and play really um, and that is how that that idea came about because when I did that one and several other ones and after it was done so many people really liked that one that I decided to uh, make it a bigger story or, or flesh it out a little more cool and so I want to go to a couple questions that we have from some of our preschoolers at Commodore Stockton in San Francisco, California. Okay. Thank you guys for submitting. Yeah. Um, and we have one from Jaden. Okay. And Jaden wants to know, why do you write books? Why do I write books? I write books, Jaden, because I really love books. I didn't like them so much as a kid, but now I love them and I go get books all the time. Um, so, yeah, that's why I write books. And I love sharing books. So, yeah. So, Keep reading them, Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> and then question two from Sarah, also at Commodore Stockton. She wants to know, where did you learn to write books? Where did I learn to write books? Um, well, you know, I went to school, so I had uh, reading, I had writing, I had English teachers, so I learned a lot of that foundation in school. Um, I learned a lot from uh, my mom. My mom's a big reader. Um, so is my dad. Uh, my stepdad's a big reader and a lot from friends who like books and then from my from my kids uh, reading books with them that right. that helped a lot so that is kind of how i learned and then just through looking up stuff myself right. well thank you for those two submissions keep submitting different questions if yeah you have more some questions schoolers or kids who wants to um so i want to ask you at tandem we're big fans of children's book that's what we do if you see our wall we yeah. love books around here um, so, of course, um, we like to end our interviews with one of our favorite questions. What's your favorite children's book? What is my favorite children's book? Oh, that's a, that is such a hard question. Um, sure. Uh, I don't know. Are there any other questions that I can, like, think about it for a second? <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I think I have a question. Oh, well, welcome to our interview. Say hi. Hi, what's her name? Do you want to share? Naima. Naima, she's joining us for our interview. Yeah. Um, so what's up next for you? Uh, right now, I just finished a book by uh, Danny Gabriel. She's a poet uh, in uh, El Cerrito, California. Poet laureate, actually. And um, she wrote a book about her daughter who wants to be identified as a boy. And uh, it's called Sam. And it will be coming out this fall on Penny Candy Books. Oh, so cool. that's a new book. And so I know, can I take a look at, you've also sure, done sure. illustrations for other books. Yeah. A bean and cheese taco birthday. And then also one of a kind, kind like, me. like me. Yep. And so how do you, so you illustrate for other authors as well, correct? Yep. And how does that work? How does that collaboration kind of happen? Um, usually the, the publisher will, will reach out to me and say, you know, we'd like you to work on this book. Um, but sometimes it's the author, you know, reaches out. Yeah, well, reaches out and they want to work or collaborate together. Cool. It, de it depends. And what's the process between that when you're like illustrating for someone else's book? Mm -hmm. Typically, how long would that take you to kind of get done? Uh, it, it varies. Um, Depending on the, the manuscript, it could take anywhere from three months to a year. Wow. But uh, 
Yeah, it, it varies. It takes and a process. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a process. It's a process. It's a yeah. process. yeah. So I wanted to kind of revisit our question before and see if the you had a chance book. to think about, or what? It, we can even rephrase that. What's one of the favorite books you enjoy reading with your children? Recently, I read, let's see, what is it called? Um, my goodness, we go to the library like all the time, so I'm always getting new books. Can you not eat that? Um, <laughs> what? Uh, what did I get recently that I really liked? Hmm. I don't know why it is escaping me at, at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll just say one that uh, a friend of mine did that I really liked reading. Um, what, Benny Doesn't Like to Be Hugged, and it's a book by Zeta Elliott. And it's a book about a little boy who has a, a form of autism. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, just like a regular kid, likes to play, likes to do things. But um, his particular feeling is like you know don't touch me like it's his right. boundary like don't don't hug me don't do that like it, it upsets him so it's a nice story just kind of showing that um you can still be a kid you can still have fun you can still do all these things and not be hugged and right. um there are not that many books about that that exists that i need are, to check that book out because my son is in that phase where he's like don't touch me yeah and yeah. so <laughs> he's definitely aware of his personal space. Yeah. So I'm going to check that book out. Okay, good. Yeah, that's yeah. a book we need to yeah, kind of share and discuss. Yeah, that's so a good one. So for our fans out there, do you want to tell them where they can, like, locate your other books or sure. contact you? Sure. You can look me up at Rob Don't Stop. That's my website if you want to see artwork and some of the past books. Uh, I'm on Instagram. You can just look up Robert Lou Trujillo on Instagram or Twitter. And those are the, the main ones that I look at. I'm on Facebook, too. You can look there as well. <laughs> so, thank you so much for being with thank us today. Thank you. Good question. I really appreciate you for coming out and bringing your daughter. She's so adorable. Thank you. So, make sure everyone check out this book, Furcon's First Flat Top. It is a great read, um, and I really enjoyed it. But you can also look Rob up at his website and information that he gave you. Um, if you want to see upcoming things and maybe some other materials yeah, and paintings yeah. and artwork that he's yeah. done, um, be sure to come back here and see us next month on July mm -hmm. 24th at 315. We will be doing another author's video, uh, author interview series with Jen Mizell. Um, But also remember that this month is Father's Day and we will be having a Father's Day video contest coming up. So please visit the Tandem Partners in Ireland Facebook website or any social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, um, and get more information about how to submit videos and to find out the drawing winners. So thank you and see you soon. Bye. Bye.